Thank you, brothers and sisters. We want to thank you for coming out today. And thank you to God Collective for having us here once again for this event. Let's give the brothers and sisters with God Collective a big round of applause. We've been back here many times, and we appreciate the support of the Toronto African community. To give you some background on what you're going to see today, it's based on our travels and research in Ethiopia. As my husband Ashra spoke earlier, uh, we travel there every year conducting a winter pilgrimage back home. And so that's how we base this presentation. The portion that I'm going to deal with is on 19th and 20th century in Ethiopia. It was Ross McConan, Wode Michael, who was governor of Harar. He was also the foreign minister and cousin of Emperor Menelik II and later father of Emperor Haile Selassie. He, here's his palace in Harar. Now, as the foreign minister, he negotiated a treaty with the Italians, and this was the Treaty of Utrale. And on Article 17 of the treaty, there were two versions. One was in Amharic, which was spoken in Ethiopia, and the other one was in Italian. Well, Menelik refused to sign the version in Italian because he didn't understand Italian, and that proved to be a very wise move because the Ethiopian copy said Ethiopia could communicate with foreign nations through the Italian Foreign Office, but the Italian copy said that Ethiopia would conduct its foreign negotiations through Italians. In other words, making Ethiopia a colony of Italy. And so Empress Taitu and Emperor Menelik were not going for that. And Empress Taitu, in particular, was a very strong nationalist. So she berated the Count Antonelli when he came before them and said that the Italians would, would not, re, uh, would not uh, forget that treaty. And so Menelik realized that it was going to be war. And so he summoned his people together. And he said, did they want to submit to the white man who had seized and enslaved all the rest of Africa? He said, whatever be our differences, we can never permit our country, which has maintained its freedom for 70 centuries, to be ruled by an outsider. He said, you have seen what the white man has done to the rest of Africa. Do you, a proud fighting race, want to be enslaved like the other inhabitants of the continent? He said, Ethiopia has never been conquered, and she shall never be as long as she preserves her indomitable spirit. Ethiopia shall stretch out her hand only to God and to smite her enemies. In 1889, in the meantime, the Italians had brought cattle to Ethiopia that were infected with render pest disease. This caused a famine throughout Ethiopia. But Menelik, good emperor that he was, suspended the debts and taxes. So he became known as the loving mother figure Menelik. And because of this action of suspending all the debts and taxes, there was a lot of national unity. So when Menelik made the call, Ethiopians from all over came to fight against the Italians. And all of them pledged their allegiance. Even his main foe, Ras Mangasha, who was uh, Johannes' son, he told uh, Menelik, he said, I will drive the Italians out with the very bullets that they gave me to kill you. <laughs> That's what we're talking about, African unity here. The archbishop realized that they were about to go to war. He dropped the imperial flag. He dipped it before the altar, and he said it was time to come and lay down their lives before God, the emperor, and their country. 
and the Ethiopian soldiers got ready for this battle. And provincial kings decided to lay down their, their jealousies and their ambitions in order to defend the last independent country in Africa. In fact, the soldiers were called the Black Lions. They, you see he's wearing the lion's mane on his head? That's because they were named after the Ethiopian lion, which has a very dark mane. He's smaller than other lions, but he's just as tough. And that was the Ethiopian, the black lion. And Menelik said, as we may all die someday, I will not be afflicted if I die. But enemies have come who would ruin our country and change our religion. These enemies have advanced, burrowing into the country like moles. And he said, but with the help of God, I will get rid of them. So says Menelik, elect of God, king of kings. So he led his troops into battle, into an area called Adwa. The Ethiopian army totaled 110,000. Menelik had over 34,000 troops under his direct command while Ross McConan had 15,000, and Taitu, Empress Taitu had 5,000 of her own, while the Italian army totaled only 20,819. But they thought they were so tough that they didn't need that many soldiers. They figured they, they would outdo these Africans. And the battle was not an easy victory, as some historians imply. At one point, the Ethiopian advance wavered, and it began to fall back under the murderous rifle fire of the Italian soldiers. But Queen Taitu, Empress Taitu, who was accompanied by Princess Zotitu, that's uh, Menelik's daughter, and her ladies-in-waiting had taken to the battlefield. And the queen rushed at the retreating soldiers, screaming, what are you doing? We will win. Forward, strike the enemy and she was able to get her soldiers to cut off the water supply. It's because of her efforts that they brought down this Italian garrison. So the Ethiopian soldiers fought valiantly. In fact, Rasalula, who had uh, worked with Johannes, he was governor of the northern provinces. In one guerrilla attack he had near Masawa, he wiped out so many Italians that the rest of them withdrew back to the coast. And he said, the Italians can come and take Ethiopian land, but only after I become governor of Rome. <laughs> This was the Battle of Adwa, and the Italians underestimated the unity of the Ethiopians. Even the Ascaris, which were supposed to be uh, Eritrean uh, working for the Italians, they gave the Italians faulty maps and went and gave Menelik secret information of the Italians. And the Battle of Adwa in 1896 saved Ethiopia from the European colonial conquest called the Scramble for Africa. So the Ethiopians were victorious March 1st, 1896 at the Battle of Adwa. <laughs> and here you see the remains of a few of the Italians that were lost on the battlefield. But Emperor Menelik became the first African to defeat a European army in the modern era. And he made Italy look incompetent. In fact, his efforts on the battlefield brought down the whole crispy government because they had lost so many soldiers on the battlefield. And here you have Menelik and his soldiers taking the Italians hostage and then putting them on the railroad train so they can head back to Italy, where they belong. <laughs> and because of this Adwa victory, it was significant not only for Ethiopia, but for Africans around the world. It was a fountain of pride and a source of inspiration for millions. 
the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey immortalized his tribute to Ethiopian heroism by incorporating, incorporating Ethiopia in his African national anthem, which reads, Ethiopia, thou land of our fathers, thou land where the gods love to be. As storm cloud at night, southern gathers our armies come rushing to thee. We must in the fight be victorious when swords are thrust outward to gleam, for us will be victorious, be glorious, when led by the red, black, and green. That was Marcus Mosiah Garvey.